I'm Gregory Brill. I'm an Alaskan commercial lodge owner. Please come visit me there. It's going to be the ultimate flying destination. Seaplane enthusiast, former jet guy, all in turbine lover. I started flying when I sold my business about six years ago and made it a full-time occupation because I needed something to occupy my mind. It totally occupied my mind and occupied my wallet and pretty much every aspect of my life. I've been through a lot of airplanes so far. I'm a huge enthusiast. I love to fly these. My mission is extremely varied. Short field is really important to me uh, because I have Alaskan properties. I have uh, properties in Wyoming. So I actually live in Alpine Air Park, which is kind of a uh, one of the older and more traditional uh, air parks in the United States in Wyoming. I'm kind of an airplane collector, but I don't collect airplanes that I don't use. I have a lot of very rural uh, short field missions. I have an Alaskan lodge that's very, very hard to get to in Iliamna. I have all kinds of stuff. I've been through a lot of airplanes, love them all, but I think I've kind of like finally settled on on turbines, and in particular the TBM, I'll talk about why. I've had a Honda jet. I've had a Cirrus SF-50 Vision jet. Used to have an SR22T, which I really liked. Today, I've got a Kodiak 100 on uh, amphibious floats. I've got a 206H on whipline amphibious floats. Got a couple of Sea Rays, and I might have a plane problem, to tell you the truth. But I'm a huge fan of this aircraft. This is my aircraft. A lot of other things are for commercial stuff. Jets are great for passengers, in my opinion. Not as good for pilots, particularly when they have very varied missions as I do. I have a lot of rural missions. I land in the middle of Alaska, you know, unimproved runways, like all kinds of things. Turbine is great. The TBM in particular is great. For me as a pilot, it has everything. It's kind of like the Venn diagram of everything you want to do in an aircraft. This airplane can do it. A TBM can do it. Everything from the first TBM there ever was, a 700A, all the way through a TBM 960. They're just great. Part of the reason they're great is you've got beta. Beta is an amazing thing. It lets you, lets you take your propeller and flip it backwards and throw the air out in front of you so you can slow down with your prop as opposed to just use it as a speed brake like you can in a piston or something like that. It's really cool. You can even go in reverse. So you can actually back out of a tight spot. Don't act like you haven't ever wanted to do that. I know I have. Very fast. You know, it trues, supposedly this would true at 330. Uh, I've never seen that. I've seen 323. But come on, 323 knots, true, that's great. You get anywhere, you could race any jet, race your friend in the biggest jet he or she's got, and um, they're only gonna beat you by half an hour. So my partner, Brett, and I, we actually train in turbines, which is kind of interesting, and, and what does that mean? Why would we train in this? Well, it has a lot to do with my own journey here. So I used to be a big enthusiast for jets, light jets anyway. The difficulty with jets when you're flying yourself is exorbitant expense. Between the engine programs and, and everything, it's extremely expensive. Also, jets tend to be very limited in their missions. Jets are good for passengers, in my opinion, the greatest. It's great for pilots when they're passengers too. But it's not as good, in my opinion, for you know the, the pilot, particularly single pilot jets. There's a whole bunch of them. My opinion, having been a single pilot jet driver, is maybe we really need to think about single pilot jets. And the reason is, and why I so prefer turbines, is you pretty much have the same speed and capability, but you can land a lot more uh, places. This, you know, you can land in very short fields, things like that. Jets need a lot of space, they need good weather, and most importantly, in a jet, you have to fly it constantly. My opinion, having flown jets, commercially, you know, light jets commercially on charter and also owning them, is that you've got to make sure that you fly this jet to proficiency. It's very hard and very expensive to fly a jet to proficiency. You don't have the time unless you're a commercial captain, but if you're just a GA guy or girl and you want to just fly jets, you know, you're always going to be in a situation where am I really good enough to be landing in this weather? I know it's legal, but geez, you know, and I've seen some friends get into some trouble with some jets, you know, thankfully not serious, but certainly damaged some expensive birds. So I kind of came to a conclusion that if I'm gonna fly alone and you're gonna fly alone, but you wanna fly at jet speed, that's really key. There comes a point in the piston universe where it's like, I can't take it anymore. I can't take two, three days, you know, to get, you know, to all of these missions. Um, it gets really tiring and it gets to you eventually. Really fun for short stuff, but hard for long stuff. So I was like, okay, what's as fast as a jet? But what is more versatile and can land in more places? What has a relatively low cost of operation closer to what I'm used to 
with pistons and what doesn't have an exorbitant amount of programs, you know, things you have to pay into for every hour? And the answer is uh, a TBM. So we train in TBMs because I think that as a general aviation pilot predominantly and people coming up from pistons, turbines have some specific and unique characteristics that obviously you have to master. They don't require a type rating. You know, I think it's below nine seats. Um, so this is a 330 knot aircraft, theoretically, that does not require a type rating. Think about it, carry, you know, six people in this. I can be fully fueled and take off with six people. I have the useful load for that. It's just a massive carry, it's massively quickly, but your private pilot license, you know, that you got, you know, on the 172 or whatever, you could hop into this and legally fly it, all right? Think about it, you, know, you probably shouldn't. And your insurance company wouldn't let you. So what we do is uh, we can sign you off for the insurance so that you actually can be trained in the aircraft and insurance is confident that you're a competent enough pilot. So we mentor people, we make sure that um, you're, you're good at short field because you're gonna have a plane that's really capable. That means you as a pilot have to become really capable too. You have to learn how to use your beta. You have to learn to deal with a much faster aircraft and that's what we like to teach. So what does it cost to fly a TBM 900 series? So this is the 900, the 910, the 930, the 940. Is there a 50? I think so, 60s, a lot of 900s. They're all the same airplane fundamentally in fuselage and engine. They differ in electronics and avionics. So what's the cost? Well, this is the latest iteration and version of Dehaire TBM. And so if you were gonna buy this on the used market, you know, a 900, 3.1 for 3.2 million is pretty much what you're gonna be with uh, a fair amount of time left on the engine. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. That's your biggest cost in the 900. I don't think that's the best value, by the way. I would recommend getting a TBM 700A or B. These can be had for anywhere from half a million to 800,000 to a million. In fact, for the price of a shiny new Cirrus SR22T, you actually could get into a perfectly good TBM that will go about 300 knots. So that's, that's really it. So there's a big variation on that. So for the price of a new Cirrus SR22, I think they're like 1.1, 1.2 million when you fully deck them out now, and that's a piston, mind you. I got a friend with a, it's basically a piston, but very modern avionics and stuff. He paid $2 million for that piston, right? That's where we're talking for like new aircraft these days. I don't know if that's good, that's bad, that's whatever, but you can get a TBM 700 A or B model um, for under a million. So you can actually be almost twice as fast, maybe twice as fast um, and twice as capable as that piston. You'll have older avionics, but you can get there. And you know, there comes a point where you just, you actually do have the mission for it. So let's talk about cost of ownership. In the turbine world, you have to be aware of the engine people and the engine programs, right? So the FAA says that at 3,500 hours, your engine, your jet needs to be taken apart and looked at and rebuilt. You know, it's like the TBOs we have for the pistons, right? Problem is, unlike the piston, if you're complaining about, you know, 40 or $50,000 for a rebuild or whatever, try half a million. An engine like this, which is a Pratt & Whitney PT-6 66 Delta, if you just show up at Pratt & Whitney and hello, I'm at 3,500 hours. I'd like to rebuild my engine, please. So I'm, I'm airworthy again. Um, they'll be like, great. Um, well, let's take a look. Oh my. You know, we don't like these, the coating loss here, and we don't like this, that, and the other. 600,000, uh, I've seen it as far as 800,000. A new one is 1.1 million now, I think. So it's like, yikes, right? Okay, so what do you do when you have an engine that at 3,500 hours, particularly if you're buying a used aircraft, is, you know, going to need a rebuild? The important thing to realize is for part 91, the rebuild is optional. It's not mandatory. It's actually, it's not mandatory for anybody. Suggest it. There's a program, and this is probably a show on its own, called MORE, or M-O-R-E. It's a program developed by the FAA and some charter operators in the 90s, which lets you add additional inspection regimen, which will cost you a little more, but you can avoid the overhaul for a much longer period of time, which you absolutely want to do. Cost is, is sophisticated. All right, so why did I go into all of that about turbines and engines and stuff like that? So let's say you're a general aviation person, you're moving from a piston, goodbye Saratoga, goodbye Cirrus or whatever, I'm gonna be a, a jet guy now, I'm gonna be a prop jet guy. You gotta be very judicious about the cost, you gotta figure out what you want your cost to be. So what I mean by that is, 
if you're going to be, you're like, you know what, at 3,500 hours, I only have 1,000 hours left. For me, that's only five years of flying. And then I absolutely want to refurb the engine and I don't want to be surprised by the amount of money. You're going to pay per hour into a program, right? You're going to say, well, I'm going to say $200 an hour. I'm going to put in a bank account and then I'm going to do a deal with Pratt & Whitney or whatever uh, whereby they'll guarantee to overhaul my engine at some fixed cost. I don't like that. I, I typically would prefer to just treat an engine very, very well and extend it as far as I can, but I'm unique like that. So here are my costs for operating the airplane, okay? My cost for operating this airplane, it's 56 gallons an hour. Unlike most jets, it deals with gallons per hour as opposed to pounds. So 56 gallons an hour times like the way fuel prices have been lately, it's not atypical for me on a very, very long journey, you know, when I stop and I put in 200 gallons or whatever, to see a 15 to $1,800 fuel bill, right? So that's pretty typical. So your, your cost may vary, but that's the number one cost in this, 56 gallons per hour. You can't escape it. That said, it's twice as fast as a Cirrus or something else. So if you're thinking, well, I can do 15 or 11 gallons an hour, I'm like, great, but it takes you twice as, as long to get someplace. So there's that. Still, it's more expensive. I think it works out to, I've heard it's like five miles to the gallon. I think that's what it does uh, effectively, fully loaded and stuff, so it's pretty good. Other costs are um, your insurance. So insurance is a substantial cost in this. You know, your cost of acquisition of the aircraft, of course, it's a turbine, there's that. The engine programs, you know, that's up to you. Uh, I don't do an engine program. I'm taking my chances. Uh, I also plan on flying it and being buried in it. Buried in it from a non-flying, peaceful passing in my bed many years from now, mind you, to be clear on that. Insurance can be like my insurance. Uh, you know, I have, I have jet time, charter time, stuff like that. I'm still paying over 30,000, like 35,000. And then there's a lot of things uh, with that insurance. So 35,000, and then if you wanna go to Europe, Oh, that is another uh, ten thousand dollars, please, or ten thousand euros for for coming to Europe. Yeah, sorry, it's terrible. But that's uh, you know, so insurance can really vary. Um, you know, probably I can't see you getting in something like this as a GA person for less than twenty thousand a year in insurance. That said, I seem to remember my Cirrus being fifteen or twelve. So, is what it is. So your insurance costs. Uh, fortunately, the insurance costs don't scale with the amount you fly it. So if you're a big flyer in general aviation, yeah, okay, it's $30,000 a year, which is a lot, but if you're flying 300 hours a year, it's really not that bad when you amortize it over all your flying. So there's that. Other costs associated with it, this is up to you. You can basically, your maintenance on this is uh, more rigid than it is for a piston. For this particular aircraft, the manufacturer has a, has a series of inspections they recommend. So my partner, Brett, who you've met in other videos, is a, an IA and an a and and does specifically use the De Hare Service Center. So I learned through him, the manufacturer has these recommendations. I'm not an a and but um, every year your annual is either what's called an A-plus, a B-plus, or a C-plus, and these things rotate. I forget the actual schedule. So when you get to maintenance of something like this, I really recommend you call my IA, a &P, and partner, Brett, um, because there are not really a lot of, it's a French aircraft, and I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it can be very tough to find a service center that can take you in the time frame that you need, that's where you are and at a cost that's not gonna make you jump out of your shoes. So the manufacturer has a recommended maintenance plan that you must act according to. You cannot screw around with a turbine. Right? The moment you do, the moment you fall out of the manufacturer's recommendations, even if they're not the FAA, the plane just will devalue, will devalue instantaneously and you're probably putting yourself at risk. The manufacturer of a turbine is a much higher bar than manufacturers of pistons um, with the FAA and whatnot. So there's a regimen, it's called A+, plus, B+, plus, C+, plus. every year the annual is one of those three. Uh, A+, plus isn't so bad, C+, plus is, uh, is pretty much uh, a rear probe. A C plus can be really expensive. So a C plus annual when it's time, like on this aircraft, I want to say it was about $15,000, right? That's how much that is. So your maintenance is definitely going to be higher. Um, you also have mandatory inspections of the engine itself. You have what's called a hot section. So every some number of hours, they have to open up the hot section of the engine where a lot of the very important parts are that spin around. They look at it and they make sure there's nothing uh, scary. If there is something scary, congratulations, you have an overhaul. 
Uh, hopefully there's nothing scary. Another cost of this type of aircraft is training. For you to get in this aircraft coming from a piston or even another turbine or even a jet, which was my case, I came down you know, from jets to this because that has more capability as a mission. You know, there's training. You're gonna be about 15 hours, 15 to 20 hours, where you're gonna have to fly with somebody who's an expert that can sort of show you all the, the ropes. There isn't officially a required type rating for this, which actually is a huge cost savings over jets. I don't know if you know this, but if you're gonna fly a jet, anything with a jet doesn't have a prop, every year you gotta to go to flight safety or CAE or some other agency, and they can be as much as 30 to 40 to $50,000 uh, a year to get your type rating and keep your type rating current every year. So really expensive. You know, my missions for this for this aircraft turbine, I have two of them. I have uh, 101 November X-Ray, which you've seen, and I've got this, which is 900 Tango Whiskey. Um, I actually dry lease them and I make them available to other pilots that want to get time in them to sign off for insurance. So that's one of my missions for them is to actually make them available in the context of training and of just experience so that you can fly safely in them. So if you want to transition to into a turbine, I'm one of the few places you could probably go, Brett and me, where you can actually say, listen, I need a turbine. I want to do some trips. I want some training instruction. I want to get good at this. Uh, otherwise, you have to buy one. So if you don't want to buy one and you want to try one um, with a good qualified instructor and stuff like that, I'm probably your only game in town. Uh, low, low prices every day. For my missions, um, I mostly, uh, I'm opening up a commercial lodge in Alaska. Um, I want it to be a, the ultimate fly-in community. More on that in another video, because that's a big, big project. But my missions for this is, I never know where I'm going. I never know where I'm landing. I never know where exactly I'm gonna end up having to land. That's kind of sums up like my missions for an aircraft. You cannot take a jet into that world. And you cannot take really, in my opinion, a piston in that world. You really need the power and capability of a turbine. Sometimes I've got to land in under 2,000 feet. I got to, because on the other side is water or a cliff, right? So a turbine with its beta and ability to slow down instantaneously is great. A TBM is a tank of an aircraft. It's a fast tank. Um, it will put up. It is extremely forgiving. So I can enter environments with an extra margin of safety. Um, that I don't believe is available in a piston to the same degree, certainly not with a jet. Jets are flown by the numbers and you have to say no to a lot of places and jets a lot of times. This aircraft, you can safely say yes. I've got, you know, just tremendous infrastructure in this airplane. I got tremendous speed and I can land absolutely anywhere. So whether it's Alaska or my home, Alpine Air Park in Wyoming, I can fly a procedure in snow, um, come up over the reservoir, um, the runway can be a little bit contaminated. I know that I can slow down. Again, I think the key thing with the turbine is beta. Once you get a taste of beta, being able to throw your prop in reverse and slow down, it's very, very hard to want to fly anything else.